Hey everyone, this is Daniel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Microsoft Forms options to edit responses after it has been submitted. And this is a new feature that I started rolling out this month, which is May of 2023. It already showed up on my tenant. It might have even appeared on your tenant, which is why it's very important that you watch this video. Now, there are a few setting options that you need to be aware of. And, and this also works for the anonymous option, but there's a little catch to that. And I'll walk you through that as well. So stick around. There's a lot to learn. This is very exciting. But first, here's my intro video. So here are the details of this announcement and I'm reading this in my Microsoft 365 admin centers message center and over here you can see that this is the new feature and it starts to roll out in May of 2023 which is this month. Uh, it even shows you some screenshots of what it would look at at a perform level and then you also have an option at the tenant level to go ahead and allow it or disable it and we'll take a look at that at the end. So now I want to show you exactly how this works in two scenarios. One is to create a form and share it internally which is to all the members of my tenant my company employees and then also do a anonymous one and see what is that little catch over there and we'll see how that works as well so let's go take a look at that so here i am in my microsoft forms i'll go and select a plus new form uh, i'll go and say testing the edit feature all right and i'll go and add a choice okay the choice i'll actually select it as that one uh, rating i'll go and keep that as is um, and i don't want any other things all uh, recommendations i'll leave this um, as is but what i want to do is now go into the settings which is by clicking on these three dots of the ellipsis click on the settings and right over here you see allow respondents to edit their responses by default this box is checked um, so in this scenario, which is only for people in my organization and you keep a count of the record name, uh, I'll leave that as is because that's the default setting, but I will go ahead and turn this feature on, which is allow respondents to edit their responses, all right? I'm gonna select that. So now I wanna test it, but I wanna really do a real world test. By real world, I mean, let one of my employees actually test this. So I'll go and click on the collect responses. I'll go and grab this copy link. Um, then I'll just switch over to another one of my browsers because this is my company employee. Uh, so say if this company employee actually got the link from an email or posted on Teams, uh, when the employee comes, they see the form. Simple two questions, right? So the first one we select is option number one, and then we go and give it a full five star, uh, click on submit, and now you see this feature. It says save and edit later. And there's no other option over here, okay? So I'm just gonna go and say save and edit later, done. But here you see now this one, which was there testing the edit feature, it gives me the option for filled form. So if I just click on the filled form, I come back in and now it says, hey, you can view and edit your response. And here's the pencil uh, icon. So if I click on it, now I can change it. So it says, okay, I first put option one, selected option two. This time I'm actually gonna be a little wiser and I'll only give three stars and I'll click on submit. And then it goes ahead and puts this thanks, which means that it recognized that this is your second one that you've done. So it did not give me the save and you know edit later. No, it's just done. Uh, but what I can do is I can actually close out of this one and even say for whatever reason I had completely closed out of this you know uh, tab or if I go ahead and refresh this, uh, you may not see this over here anymore. However, you can go to this filled forms tab and in the filled forms tabs, that's the one that we just did, testing the edit feature. So if I go and click on that one, back again, we are in the same place and I can go and do an edit. So as you can see, it does give you multiple options to go ahead and edit that form while the form is still active. That's the important thing. And by, by what I mean by active is if I go back to our original uh, place, when we go and take a look at means the original form and look and look at look at the settings, uh, you know, it is allowing you to accept responses. If I go ahead and now uncheck this box, which means no other, you know, responses will be submitted. If I go back now into this form and say if I you know, close out of this tab, I go back and click over here, uh, try to click on the edit responses and click on submit. It says this form doesn't allow edit. Please contact the form owner for more information. That's because I went ahead and disabled the use of this form. So again, there is dependency 
on the original owner. The owner still has full control of how many times this can be edited. So that's a very important thing. So now that we finished the testing as a company user, an internal company user, let's go and see how the anonymous one works. So we're back in the same form, but right now on the settings for who can fill out this form, I'm going to go and select the anyone can respond radio button. So I'll select this. And what I was surprised is that even after I selected that, the option for allow respondents to edit their responses, it didn't automatically become grayed out. Uh, I was honestly expecting that, but it did not. So I'm not really eager to trust how this works. So I'll go back and click on the collect responses. Um, it is got the anyone can respond for anonymous responses. I'll go and make sure that I got to get a correct link in case the link has changed. So I'll go and copy this. Uh, but now I really want to thoroughly test this. So I've also made sure not only am I got the different browser, uh, but I'm going to go into this edge browsers in private window and I'll paste this in. Okay, this is the URL. Uh, so I go and paste it in. Again, it did not tell me hi Daniel or hi Finn or hi any of my employee names. This is a good verification that yeah, Daniel is actually testing the anonymous way, all right? Uh, so now I'll click on option one. I will go and select, give it a five star right now. I'm gonna click on submit. Now it still comes up to this you know, final page and I'm gonna say yeah, submit, save and edit later. But now it goes in through an authentication, all right? So in the authentication, I am going to authenticate in to one of my accounts. So here is actually a test account of mine. I'll go and paste that in. I'll go to next and I need to actually go and put in now the password. So I'll go ahead and put in the password and I'll go ahead and sign in. And now that I'm saying is, yeah, that's fine. I'll go ahead and actually select no because I don't want this to save. Uh, so it took it down directly into the tenant of this external user, okay? And in this external user, now you actually see the form that I built in my tenant and I saved it this one. So yes, we were allowed to have an anonymous submission, but if the option to edit the response was required, then it does need an authentication of that anonymous. And it just doesn't have to be an N365 one. Uh, I did some testing where I was able to go and put in some other you know, account altogether, and I was able to still, it didn't even have to be a Microsoft account. I was still able to go ahead and save it into that account. And then every time you come back in, you actually are able to go ahead and click on it. You can click on the edit response and then change it. That all piece functions the exact same way. Now, if I go back to my tenant, all right, and in my tenant, say I basically go ahead and now completely delete this form, okay? Completely delete this form. So I see, come, come back onto my, here, I go to my forms, and in my forms, this is the one that I was creating. So I click on it, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this altogether. I deleted the form, which means I've lost everything, that's fine, but I delete the form. If I go back now to this original location, which was the place where the anonymous person filled it in, uh, if I go and remove that, they still see it in their area here. And if I even go and refresh it, it still shows up. But if I go and delete it, this says eh, this form doesn't exist, all right? So then afterwards, the anonymous person can basically click on this ellipsis and then also say remove from my recent. So it basically goes ahead and you know, removes any confusion. In the filled forms also, you can basically go and say remove from my portal. That way it just avoids any confusion. So even the anonymous person who wanted to go ahead and refill it multiple times, um, you don't know who filled it in, but it saved it in that person's tenant or some location. Uh, you have the option also to go and delete it from the location by that anonymous user. And finally, for the tenant level settings about this feature, you can come to your Microsoft 365 Admin Center, uh, click on settings, click on org settings, and over here, basically just come to the top right and do a search for forms. And you see Microsoft Forms, you click on the Microsoft Forms, as you scroll down, you see the options for respondent actions, control what action form respondents can do. It says allow respondents to edit their responses. This is the box that is checked by default. You can go ahead and uncheck it and click on save. The changes have been saved. So if I go back to my forms over here, I go back to my Microsoft forms. And in my Microsoft forms, I say I try to create another form and in my settings, I go to my settings sections, you do not see that option anymore over there. So you use, by default it was turned on, I was able to go through my Microsoft 365 Admin Center and go ahead and disable that. So this is pretty awesome because now you've got the capability to go ahead and edit an existing form or even a quiz, which means the users have the option now to go ahead and make changes to it. Um, now remember, this is not a full replacement for say a Power Apps Canvas app because this is a WYSIWYG, which means what you see is what you get. 
you cannot custom design it how you could do naturally and beautifully say in a canvas app or power apps uh, but you've at least got some flexibility to go ahead and add a simple design to the form now, for choice type answers you can actually go and put in some images and i've done some videos on that you've got some flexibility over there but this one is by no means a replacement of the power apps canvas app one remember over there you can build it from scratch so hopefully this video was useful to you and you will very soon if not already have this feature available in your tenant and you can go and start leveraging it hello 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 so if you like this video go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button also if you have a few extra seconds can you go and put in a comment either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video and until then see ya